Hey, how's it going? So this company reached out. They have a current campaign running, very low budget, but they're looking to do an audit and just have someone optimize and improve the account, the campaign, a little bit of everything, just to see what we can do, if we can squeeze out some more leads, lower the cost per lead, and honestly, just kind of get a second opinion on it to improve the account. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that here with you guys live today. Kind of just breeze through some of the things I typically look at, glance at, and what catches my eye for improvements or changes, and hopefully you can learn something from this. So starting off, off the bat, I can already see a few things. One, their budget is incredibly low. It's honestly probably so low that I wouldn't even be, recommend they run ads, but that's gonna be a separate conversation, of course. Their optimization score is pretty low, which really doesn't matter or affect things but worthwhile checking the recommendations just to make sure. And then additionally, their cost per conversions around $8 this month to date in a 21% conversion rate. Personally, I have a very hard time believing that's accurate. So we're gonna go ahead and start by checking out their conversion goals here. I wanna see if they're tracking the proper things or if they're completely tracking the wrong things. Now scrolling down, they definitely have some outdated conversion actions, right? So these are from Universal Analytics. I can see we have calls from ads properly running, so that's good. That's the first indication of something proper. It says they, okay, so this is definitely one of the other issues here. They're tracking people who visited the contact page. So these are solely page views. These are not actual conversions, right? They don't have 17 form fills. These are just solely 17 people who have viewed the page, the contact page. All right, so that's a concern. We're gonna have to set up form tracking and remove this. We don't want that. Scrolling down further, this is interesting. So they do have an appointment booked through Google Analytics for um, nine conversions. That does seem like a lot for what they're tracking. Um, I don't have access to their Google Analytics, so I can't verify this. I'm gonna have to connect with the client separately to look into this and see if that's actually accurate, but that's pretty interesting. Regardless, I know two things. I know one, we should not be tracking this. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this as well as set up new form tracking. And we also aren't tracking website calls. So first I'm gonna go ahead and set up the actual tracking for website calls. Navigate to create conversion action. We're gonna choose phone calls and then clicks to a phone number on your website. And I'll just name this website calls. You can name it whatever you want. Scrolling down, we're not going to use a value. We're gonna track only one. We only wanna track unique leads. And because this company is based in the United Kingdom, we're gonna select that. Now we're also going to go ahead and just paste their phone number here. Make sure there's no extra spaces or anything and just in case it messes up the tracking. Scrolling down for call length, you can set whatever you want. Honestly, I usually set 15, 30, or 60 seconds. In this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and do 15 seconds because they aren't my client, so I'm not sure what they want. And then create and continue. Now Google is going to go ahead and give us two separate tag snippets. We're going to install the tag ourselves, and you would install this tag first at the absolute top of the header site-wide, right? It explains it right here. Explain it in the head tags of your page completely site-wide, site and then directly below that is going to be the actual phone number snippet. We're going to paste that as well, directly underneath this snippet above in the same spot, site-wide in the head. So go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and pause real quick and take care of that and navigate to the client's website. All right, that is now set up. Um, that'll sync here shortly, probably in a few hours. It'll go ahead and say active once Google verifies the tracking code. I'm gonna do some quick cleanup as well. I know we don't need two conversion goals for the exact same thing, being calls from extensions. And you can see I already went ahead and renamed it. I'm also gonna delete these two up here since these are from Universal Analytics. So we certainly don't need that. Those are no longer in use. Now they do have a Google Analytics 4 conversion goal for contact form submitted, which is exactly what we want, but it does say zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down further and actually remove this one as well. We don't wanna track this because it is simply a page view, right? We only wanna track actual form submissions. And by having that conversion action live, saying that there's 19 form fills this month, that's completely skewing data, right? As you saw in the previous window, it said 28 conversions. Well, we know that there are not 28 conversions in this account because we're considering page views as a conversion. Now that we have extension calls properly tracking, we have website calls properly tracking, we just have the appointments booked and the contact form submitted and remaining. Again, I don't have access to the analytics, so I'm going to have to further review that. But in this case, I'm gonna test both of these once I get access, and if they aren't working, I'll just go ahead and set up new conversion tracking for specifically forms or direct appointments later. 
Moving on to conversion goal settings, I just like to ensure these are always aligned. So for call conversion action, we'll go ahead and set a default, which would be extension calls. And then for enhanced conversions for leads, we can go ahead and turn this on and utilize the Google tag. And because we installed the Google tag in their site, that will automatically get picked up. Super easy stuff here, right? Now, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these recommendations. Again, I don't usually reference optimization score as it doesn't actually affect performance, but it's super low. So part of me is just kind of concerned that maybe they're doing something wrong, right? Now, most of these we can ignore, like Google says, utilize maximize conversions. Well, we don't really have enough real conversion data to use that. Measure values, don't really need that. Dynamic images, I avoid anything dynamic. Price assets, not relevant. And then at the top here, it says create a performance max campaign. Again, this is lead gen. I typically don't use performance max for lead gen and they really don't have much budget for a new campaign. So we're gonna go ahead and ignore most of these and anything I find I'll address myself. So I'm just gonna dismiss a few of these just so that the optimization score kind of gets boosted back up and everything looks good and normal. Next, let's go ahead and breeze through some of the campaign settings. Make sure everything is aligned here. I always wanna keep both of these networks off so that looks good. I want to ensure the location targeting is set to presence only. That looks good. And then everything else here mostly looks fine. For their bidding though, they don't have a maximum cost per click bid limit. So let's see what their average is this month. We scroll over here. They're averaging about a pound and 63 cents. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and set a max bid limit of $2 and 50 cents or two pounds and 50 cents. Um, that way, Obviously they have such a low budget, it would be really wasteful if they had a click that cost them six bucks, right? Cause then their whole budget's exhausted for the day. So I'm just gonna set a max bid limit just for kind of good practice. Their CTR and everything else looks really good here. We know that conversion rate, cost per conversion and all conversions are kind of heavily skewed because if you break it down, that's mostly just me referencing stuff that we don't care about, um, which is definitely this one. And then this one right here, I'm not too sure about yet. I'm gonna have to do a deeper dive on that one. While budget is still the top of my mind because we just talked about bid limits and they're you know super low budget, I'm gonna go ahead and check a few other things such as ad schedule because there are areas where we can so-and-so squeeze the budget. Now, I saw this earlier, so it's something I'm gonna point out. They're running their ads 24 seven, which is fine. Most advertisers run ads 24 seven because most of the time Google knows to kind of optimize and run your ads during peak hours. But for a client like this, maybe two clicks, three clicks, and they're done for the day. Let's go ahead and set the ad schedule to be something normal, maybe 6 a.m. to late at night. That sounds about right. Again, I don't wanna limit their ads too much. I'm just really trying to think out of the box here and at least utilize or squeeze the most of their budget as we can. Another area would be going ahead and checking their devices. I always like to ensure that tablets are turned off. They've spent six bucks there, which is really nothing. But again, just for good practice, let's go ahead and disable tablets. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at their assets and extensions. I'm kind of just going through the low hanging fruits and the easy stuff. That's kind of how I work my way through accounts. I go through the easy stuff first and then I get into the more in depth, um, time consuming parts like ad groups, ads, keywords, negatives, all that stuff. So at a glance here, this is already pretty bad. I can tell, especially I can tell they have automatically created assets and extensions turned on. And this is something you're definitely gonna pay attention for as most advertisers don't know you can disable this. If you navigate to assets and extensions in the upper right here, click three vertical arrows, click more account level automated assets. Go ahead and select that. And we're gonna click the exact same thing again to get to the next part of the screen, more options, advanced settings. And here we can actually one by one disable each automatically created asset type, right? So we can disable dynamic site links, they're called. We can turn off dynamic callouts, structured snippets, and all of that. Since these three at the top here are really the only ones that are gonna be utilized by Google, and most of these won't even be applied, I'm only gonna turn off these three for now, but I recommend you turn off all of these. Now I'm gonna go through and actually delete majority of these, or honestly, probably all of them. My concern is one, they're automatically created, which just is low quality. I mean, can you imagine seeing some of these in the site link? It just really doesn't make sense. Like custom testimonials and contact and all that stuff is good, but really the issue is not them just being okay. It's just that they're, they're plain. They're nothing, they're really nothing special. Um, they're just basic. 
And even more so, they don't even have descriptions. They're purely just a site link with no description. So they're really not be utilizing properly. So I'm actually gonna remove all of these and create all new site links. If we go ahead and check out the callouts as well, completely empty, they don't have any callouts at all. Structured snippets are actually fine. We can probably do a little bit better. If we go navigate to the call extension, we can go ahead and actually just check to make sure this is properly set up. This looks good to me. The conversion action is using the proper goal. So that's fine, but they're definitely lacking a lot of extensions. So now I'm definitely gonna go ahead and create all new site links, call outs, and probably add in some structure snippets. They also do have some images. Um, I would think we could probably add a couple more they don't have any in their asset library, I'll just go ahead and pull them from their website, but images are always gonna be a huge benefit. Go ahead and add in a couple of new callouts as well as some new site links. I'll go ahead and add some additional ones here shortly, but honestly, these are really so simple. Just go to the website, see what stands out. And of course, if it's your business, you know best, right? What entices people to click? For this client, they reached out and they told me, hey, look, our pricing is super low and we have 75 years of experience. That's pretty incredible to me. Low pricing, 75 years experience, or 75 years in business, I suppose. That's incredible, right? Those are definitely things we wanna call out in our ads, our ad copy, our assets, and our extensions. I even recommend you sync your Google business profile to your Google ads campaign through the location asset here. This will allow you to serve and be eligible for Google map ads or sponsored listings if you've seen those before. Super helpful, especially for local lead gen businesses. Now let's go ahead and move forward. This really just leaves the ad groups, the ads, and the keywords now left to kind of go through, refine, and revise as needed. Now off the bat, me personally, I see only having one ad group as a concern. However, this is a pretty straightforward and simple service, right? Chimney sweeping, chimney cleaning, really doesn't get that in depth. However, I also know there's a lot of different variations in terms of how people search for this different types of chimneys and different locations. So in my eyes, they could definitely segment this further by having specific ad groups for specific keywords, like keywords specific to Cambridge could be its own ad group or keywords specific to fireplace, meaning they're using the word fireplace instead of chimney. That would be a different way of going about that. Then of course, scrolling through this, we have some other variant of keywords such as gas, right? Gas is obviously different than stove. So those are different ways we can go ahead and kind of segment this out to get things a little more refined here. We have another keyword here, gas fireplace, um, fireplace inspection, right? A lot of these are great keywords. We could probably just pull them out and do a little bit more refinement, better structuring and more organized so that the ads that triggered by the keywords have more search intent or more ad relevancy. Before we do that, let's take a quick look at their actual ads itself, which honestly look great to me. I mean, we already have a CTR of 13%. Go ahead and kind of take a quick look at those as well. Maybe just skim through them real briefly. Scrolling down. I'm not gonna question the ad copy too much because it's working, right? Obviously 13% click through rate, something's working. Are there headlines maybe I would swap out and change? Sure, of course. Honestly, because they're fully utilizing all 15 headlines, me personally, I would go ahead and actually duplicate this ad and split it in half, meaning having one ad only run six or seven headlines and the other ad only running six or seven headlines. That way we can really test to see which works better and kind of just control the ad copy a little bit more. Lastly, before we make any of those keyboards or ad group changes, give a quick little breeze through the search terms and things look pretty good here. I mean, these are all super you know, high intent specific. I will say their brand name is showing up a couple of times. I'm not sure that's too concerning. They haven't spent much money on it. So just something to be looking out for. We can probably go ahead and actually negate their brand name from the campaign so it doesn't serve. But most of these look really good. Now there are a lot of how to, how often, and do you keywords or search terms appearing. I would probably negate those. I'm not saying they're bad. But when the client has a budget of $7 a day, we really wanna make sure that we're utilizing that budget and only showing for the highest intent of keywords, right? Like Cambridge chimney sweeping, chimney sweeping companies, chimney sweeping contractors near me, those sort of things. Like these keywords here are absolutely excellent. This is exactly what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause real quick and do some quick refinement of the ad groups and the keywords, but nothing too much because the majority of what they have now is working. All right, so I still have some more work to do here, but I thought I would kind of skip over some of that and just get you an idea of what I plan on doing when I already did. 
So I went ahead and took the primary ad group and kind of made it the generic or catch all. This is where you're going to have a majority of those keywords that are just chimney sweeping, you know, inspection, cleaning, that sort of stuff. We could take it a step further and separate out, you know, inspection and cleaning and sweeping and all this stuff. Um, but that honestly might be overkill, especially for an account like this. It's super simple, but I did separate out fireplace, right? So I have a bunch of fireplace related terms. I could again, separate it out further, you know, being gas versus stove. But again, I'll probably wait and get the client's feedback on that. And then additionally, I did go ahead and create an ad specific to fireplace related keywords or searches as that will differ from stuff in the catch all or the generic ad group. Now we can go ahead and add in some of those negative keywords I mentioned. So some of those could just be, you know, how to, do you, how often, um, DIY, and then maybe even other things that are like consumer or product based like Amazon, online, that sort of thing. I'll go through the search terms a little bit more in depth, but I'm just trying to refine and weed out any low quality search terms. How do I do this? Can I clean it myself? Can I do this cheap, affordable, free, right? Um, even stuff like chimney sweeping or chimney cleaning that can definitely be kind of picked up by Google for people who are looking for products like, you know, like an actual, like, like a spray or just something to clean it yourself. Right. And you can see they already had a couple in here. They don't do installations or repairs. So they obviously negated install and repairs, which is smart. So just kind of things like that to really refine the campaign and the search terms budget of this account and the simplicity of it. There honestly isn't too much to dive into. I could go further in the audiences, the demographics and exclusions and stuff, but there really isn't any data there. Conversion data also isn't completely proper. So I would say with what we did today, and with setting up the new conversion goals, it's certainly going to be worth kind of keeping an eye on for these next two to three weeks and then probably doing another significant deep dive once we have all that new data. But that's really the grand majority of the changes I'm going to be making here today. Just kind of keeping it super low level and super simple in this account. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you have any comments at all or anything you want to see or any questions, please go ahead and comment it and I'd be more than happy to make a video covering it. Thank you.